Well, good afternoon, YouTube. This is Chuck. Today I'm coming to you from one of our local gas stations. And beautiful day. It's a. I got back from the crazy town trip a few days ago, and I decided I ought to come over here and dump my porta potty. And it made me think I haven't made a van video in a while, so maybe. Maybe it's a good time to talk about that. It's a Monday, April 17th, and uh, I'm fortunate enough in the town I live in that we have a gas station here that has a free RV dump, and uh, and I use that to service my porta potty. I try to. It's fairly busy, so I try to schedule it at a time when I don't think there'll be anybody here because sometimes there's a line. So I just got done doing that and uh, thought I'd talk about that a little bit and. I guess the subject today is, do you, if you're going to have a van, do you really need to have a potty? And, uh, you know, obviously that varies by the individual. And I've talked to people on both sides of the fence, and I've talked to people that uh, have all kinds of, uh, let, let's say, unusual ways of dealing with the situation. But I think to break it down and make it real simple is, is that, you know, at one time we were all young, and we were all 10 feet tall and bulletproof, and... Our digestive systems were still pretty new and worked pretty well, and and maybe maybe if that's you, uh, and maybe you spend most of your time camping somewhere where you have ready access to public restrooms, then maybe you don't need a potty in your van. But I can tell you from personal experience, once you get older, uh, you definitely appreciate having that available, because there's going to be a time when your when your system's not happy and. There's going to be a time that you're going to need a potty, and you're going to need it right now. And, you know, I my rig that I had before the van here was a, a Jeep, and I had my Jeep set up where I could sleep in the back of it. It was kind of a Swiss Army knife thing that I could convert and sleep in. And uh, and it worked. Uh, there was a couple things that were definitely uh, wrong with it, and one of them, of course, was the fact that you didn't have a potty. And the other thing... And I hear van people talk about this all the time, and that is it sure is nice to be able to stand up and put your pants on. Because, you know, here once again, when you're young and you can wrestle around and put your pants on while laying down, uh, you know, you can do that, but it's a whole lot more convenient if you can if you can get up and walk around. And that's one of the reasons why I saw this van, I decided I had to have it, because I had enough room I could stand up, I had enough room I could put in a good bed that was comfortable, and I had enough room that I could have a potty. Uh, the, you know, when I had the Jeep and I had to, and I spent a lot of time out in the woods, of course, I could always go for a walk with my shovel and my roll of TP and, you know, go off in the woods someplace. And that only works up to a certain point because if you're camped with a group and your group's out hiking, you know, then there's, it's always questionable where you can go. I've been camped in some areas where they've, the, the next little hill next door, is, they nicknamed them Toilet Paper Hill because everybody's been using that. And remember, we're in an area here where there's a lot of heavy camping uh, pressure from the people from the Phoenix metro area. And, that, and some of them aren't really the greatest as far as knowledgeable campers. And so I've seen some horrible things out there. And it's no wonder that some of these areas get closed off to camping because the people up there leave literally leave a shitty mess everywhere. So anyway, uh, in my opinion, I definitely wanted to have, that was one of a, that was an absolute necessity for me to have my own potty. Okay, so what, what, uh, what are the types? Well, the, the most common type, I guess the easiest is the old, uh, you know, plastic bag in a bucket thing. And I'm not knocking those because they do work. Uh, you know, you can get a, a little kit with a seat that fits on one, or you can even use a I've seen where people slice a pool noodle and put it around the edge of a, of a Home Depot bucket. And, and all that stuff works. And, and you can use that in, in an emergency. Some people use it all the time. Then there's various types of porta potties. And the one I've chosen is actually a kind of a fancy one. It's made by a company called Thetford, which makes a lot of RV stuff. And it's called the Thetford Curve. It has a little water tank and it has a little electric flush motor and it actually flushes. Uh, to me, that's the, you know, that's the convenience factor. That gives me the ability to basically have the facility with me anytime I need it, and uh, I wouldn't want to be without it. So there's a couple of, of uh, I guess, little sidebars to that, and 
uh, one of my pet peeves is I, I hate to see a camper of any kind, whether it be a van or what it is, where when you sit in there, the first thing you see is the potty, and every time you're sitting in there, you're staring at the potty. I don't want to see that. I don't want to have to stare at that. I don't want to sit on it as a stool, although some people put little covers over them to make them look like stools, and they work out fine, and, and that's okay if you're okay with that. I've got mine to where I'm not using it. It's tucked away. So let's, uh, let's go out there and take a look at it, and I'll show you exactly what I've got and where I keep it at. So let's go outside. I'm going to have to get into the sun here a little bit. I apologize for that. See, here's a fifth wheel just came into our local dump station. Uh, the center one there behind the cones and the caution tape is actually out of service right now. There's three of them there. So this guy is used to, making, use of the, uh, making use of the dump station as we speak. But let's go around, back around here, and I'll show you what I've got for my porta potty set up. If you notice these curtains, let me back up a little bit so you can see it better. Notice these curtains, the top part's silver and the bottom part's black. And the reason for that is a light coming through these windows in the back, that brutal Arizona sun. They used to be all black, they're blackout curtains. Right down there is the setup I have. Now when I want to use it, I just take the bungee cord off of it, move it out of the way, and then I pull that straight out and rotate it to the left 90 degrees and it faces down my hallway here. It gives me all the room in the world to do what I need to do. My TP lives in that bottom drawer right there. And then when I'm done with it, I just push it back out of the way so I don't have to look at it. And a bonus of that as well is that it uh, it rides good there. I've never had a problem with it. It's always, uh, it's never moved around. It stays right there. And I can open up the back door like I did just now to service it. Very simple, very easy, very convenient. And it's and uh, works basically pretty much like the one in your house. The little bottle there, uh, anybody, if you live in a van, you know what that's for. And that ain't for apple juice either. So I figured I'd talk just a little bit about that today. Once again, it's a beautiful day out, not a cloud in the sky. Let me spin you back around here. It's a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky, and a good day to get some errands done. I'm going to be back out in the field here pretty quick. I don't know exactly when. We're kind of kicking around some times and some dates. and I'll try to get you some more videos from out there, and I'll try to get you some other stuff as well. So for right now, I'll let you go, tell you to take care of each other, love each other. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful life. And we'll catch you again real soon on another one. So for right now, I'll just say peace out.